In this video, we're going to talk about rotational motion and calculus, or angular kinematics and calculus. Remember that we have three main variables, theta for angular position, omega for angular velocity, and alpha for angular acceleration. Now, if we are going to talk about the average values, then we know that the average angular velocity, or omega, is the change of angular position divided by the change in time. And the angular acceleration is the change in angular velocity over the change in time. Okay, well, what if you don't want an average? What if you don't want to know what the angular velocity is on average from 0 to 10 seconds? What if you want to know what the angular velocity is at 5 seconds? Well, when we ask those kinds of questions, we're asking about the instantaneous values. And the instantaneous values are the derivatives of um, these objects. So basically what we would do is we would say that the instantaneous angular velocity is not the finite change in theta over a change in time, but the infinitely small change in theta over the infinitely small change in time, which means we would take the derivative to find it. And to find the instantaneous acceleration, you wouldn't take the finite change in angular velocity over time, you would take the infinitely small change in angular velocity over the change in time. So just like um, velocity and acceleration for, for linear motion, you, you just take the derivative um, of the angular velocity to get the angular position and the derivative of the angular acceleration to get the angular velocity. Okay, so um, those are the, the common derivatives that we use. But it's also important to remember that we can go backwards and anti-derive. Um, when we're anti-deriving, we're finding the, the integrals. So we'll call these the integrals. And the integrals are just like um, the integrals for regular linear motion. So if I wanted to find theta, then I would integrate the angular velocity with respect to time. And if I wanted to find the uh, angular velocity, then I would integrate the angular acceleration with respect to time, just like you would do with linear motion. Oh, and I forgot to add this, but Sometimes we want to express the, um, the derivative for accelerations as a second derivative, right? Because angular velocity is the derivative of position. So I really can write this as the second derivative of the angular position with respect to time. So you also want to be able to write that. That's how you would write the angular acceleration um, as a second derivative of position. OK, enough chit chat. Let's do some example problems. You are riding a fancy camel on a carousel. The ride short circuits and spins out of control. The angular position changes according to the function theta equals 2 radians per second squared times t squared minus 8 radians per second times t plus 5 radians. What is the angular velocity at 2 seconds and what is the angular acceleration at 2 seconds? So just to make things easy, I'll write t equals 2 seconds here. Okay, so to start, um, I'm going to rewrite this theta equation in a bit more math-friendly terms. So I would write theta equals 2t squared minus 8t plus 5. Okay, that's easier for me to, to work with and to see. And basically, I'm just ignoring these units and trusting that they work. Um, and when I find the angular velocity for part A, what I need to do is take the derivative. So if I want to find the derivative of this function, the angular velocity, then I am bringing down the power and reducing it. So 2 times 2 is 4t minus 8, and then the 5 goes away. So I've got an equation for the angular velocity now. And if I want to find the angular velocity at 2 seconds, then all I have to do is plug in 2 for t, and voila, I get 0, right? That's really easy. Okay, so I know the angular velocity at two seconds is zero. And now all these are in radians per second. So this is going to be, or sorry, radians and seconds. So the angular velocity is going to be radians per second. But you wouldn't really need a unit for this because it's, it's zero. OK, so how do I find the angular acceleration? Well, you take the second derivative, or the derivative of the velocity. So when I take the derivative of the velocity, what I get is 4. And it just so turns out that if I want to find the angular acceleration at 2 seconds, well, this doesn't depend on t, so it doesn't matter. It's always going to be 4 radians per second squared. 
Now, this makes sense um, because remember, this particular equation for theta, angular position, has a t squared and a t and then some initial position. So this is actually just the constant acceleration equation. So this is a constant acceleration of 1 half of the acceleration times time squared plus the initial velocity with time plus the initial position. So 4. What's half of 4? 2. Awesome. And it works out surprisingly well, and you're a genius. All right, let's do a harder problem. You land a job studying electric scooters. We live in a beautiful world. You are asked to model the acceleration of each wheel and come up with the following equation. Alpha equals AT minus B, where A is 4, B is 6, and alpha is in radians per second squared. First question, what are the units of A and B? Okay, so now this comes up very often where you don't know what the units are and you have to make sure that they agree with the, the output of your function. So basically theta, or sorry, not theta, alpha is going to be in radians per second squared. And so A times T has to be something where when I multiply it by seconds, I get radians per second squared. So what does it have to be? Well, it has to have radians on top and then seconds, do you see it? Yeah, cubed on bottom. That way I'm going to end up canceling one of those seconds and get left with seconds squared. The B term is not multiplied by T at all, so it just is radians per second squared. Okay, so let me write that up here, simplify it. Kind of a dumb question, but it's a pretty regular thing. So A has to be radians per second cubed. B has to be radians per second squared. All right, now let's work on B and C. Okay, B, write an equation for the angular velocity. Okay, so um, since it gives us A and B, let's assume that it wants us to write that equation in terms of A and B, um, meaning I'm not going to plug in 4 and 6 just yet. And also, um, let's let's write this down for ourselves so we can work with it. A T minus B. Okay, so how are we going to figure out what the velocity is? Well, I know that the angular velocity omega is the antiderivative of alpha. Right, I'm going backwards, so I would antiderive summa alpha d t. So I'm going to plug in A T minus B and then take the derivative with respect to time, which remember that means that you are only changing the variable t, a and b, uh, we consider them to be constants because I know that, that the a will constantly be four and b will constantly be six. Okay, so when I integrate this, I'm gonna get um, a t minus b, so the t is gonna go up a power, three, and then I divide a by that new power, and then b, is going to go up a power so it just becomes t. Now indefinitely I have to put in a plus c, right, because I don't actually know um, if there is some constant of integration. But recall that for any function when you integrate the thing that you are getting is a y-intercept. So you can call this c, or if you want, you can call it the intercept of your specific function. So instead of calling it c, I would call it omega naught. So I'm going to write plus omega naught. That way I know and, and remember that c is just the initial condition. It's whatever the initial angular velocity of the object is. And that is an acceptable equation. Okay, so boom, we've got our equation for angular velocity. And I'm going to write it up here. a 3t cubed minus b. Oh, wow, I made a really weird mistake. Sorry. I got so carried away. <laughs> t squared. Whew. And then I divide that by 2. So sorry. Anyway, angular velocity a over 2 t squared minus b t plus omega naught. All right, now let's work on part c. Okay, now I don't want an equation, an indefinite answer. I want a definite answer. Assume the scooter starts from rest. How many rotations will each wheel make in 10 seconds? Okay, so first of all, starts from rest, that means its angular velocity is zero, right? Because the wheel isn't spinning yet. Now that's really important because that means we're going to get rid of omega naught um, in our equation. 
Now for part C, you're asked to find how many rotations, what is that? Well that's asking theta. And we would assume that you have an initial angular position of zero. Or you can write delta theta equals question mark. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay, so, so what do we do? Well, I know that the angular position is the antiderivative of angular velocity. So I integrate the angular velocity equation with respect to time. Now, that's where I'm going to plug in a over 2 times t squared minus bt. And again, I'm not going to write plus omega naught because I'm told that it's 0 in the problem. If it said that it initially started like at 2 radians per second, then you would have to have that. Um, but 0, we get rid of it. And now we integrate with respect to time. Okay, so this is going to give us the t cubed that I weirdly came up with before. And then I divide um, a over 2 by 3, which gives me a over 6. And this becomes um, b t squared, and I divide b by 2. Now, I also would have a constant integration here, but remember that that constant integration would really just be the initial angular position, and I'm told that the angular position is 0. So, um, I, it would become this. I, I would, you know, get rid of it. Now, this would be the indefinite answer. The definite answer is when we use this 10 seconds to figure out what the change of angle is over this time period. So to do that, I just can do 0 to 10, um, and then I evaluate this from 0 to 10. Now at this point, you'd want to plug in your numbers, right? So A is 4, B is 6, um, and you would just plug in 4, 6, 10, third minus 6 over 2 10 squared and then minus what since 0 and it goes into both t's then you are just going to be subtracting 0 and this is going to give you 666.6 repeating um, and this would be in radians minus 300 radians which would give you a walloping 366.6 repeating radians. Now you can check this by opening up your calculator and graphing this original function and doing the integration uh, with a graphing calculator. So that would look like going to y equals uh, and I've got a over 2 t squared so a is 4 and b is 6. So a over 2, 4 over 2 is just 2 and you'd use x for t. Uh, squared minus b is 6, so 6x instead of t. Uh, so again, you're graphing the angular velocity equation. Uh, and then once you graph it, then you can go to second calc 7, which is the integral. Uh, put in a lower limit of 0 and an upper limit of 10. Oh, you know what? Uh, I think we need to increase our window. So I would go to zoom out, zoom out a little bit. Did it work? Yep, there we go. So we're zooming out. Um, sometimes you have to do this if your window is too small. So second calc 7, 0 for the lower limit, 10 for the upper limit, and oh, boom, confirmed our answer, 366.6 repeating. Okay, great. Now we're almost done. This is the change of radians um, that the electric scooter has in that 10 seconds. But if you want to figure out how many rotations, then you have to take this number, 366.6 radians, and convert it to revolutions. So we just do like a factor label for that, where in one revolution, there are two pi radians, which gets rid of the radians. Um, and so three, oh, you got to be careful. Let me show you this. When you do this in your calculator, remember, you have to do the 2 pi in parentheses. So if I do 3, 6, 6, point, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, and then I divide that by 2 pi, I'm not going to get the same answer as if I did uh, 3, 6, 6, point, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, uh, divided by parentheses 2 
pi. So this is a common mistake that people make in their calculator. You have to divide by 2 pi in parentheses because of your dear Aunt Sally or PEMDAS or whatever. So 58.35, we'll say 58.4 rotations. Okay, or revolutions. You are incredibly smart and you can use calculus for things that go in circles and that is amazing. Video done.